Okay, we have said that there are two tips when you're trying to do solving equations that we've got, not solving equations, proving identities, like this identity that we've got up here. The two tips you should use every single time, okay? You're always going to need to use these two tips. The two tips were, one of them was everything in terms of sine and cos, and the second tip was not Sam, I'm not having Sam answer every question. Put everything into one thing. If it's a fraction like A over B plus C over D, add them together. But we also said if it was just A over B plus C, still add those things together. So clearly, this one that we've got here, we're going to be working on the left-hand side because that's the bit where we can add the things together. Okay? So I'm going to start off by writing out my sine x over 1 minus cos x. This is exactly how I want you to write things down. I've been seeing some of your work on the boards, and they're fine, but they're a bit like, there's an arrow here, and then an arrow drawn here, and then like it's a bit messy. So what you do is you write out the question, and then you say equals, and then I'm going to keep writing out things underneath with equals until eventually I hope that it's going to be equal to the thing that I'm aiming for down here. That's how we set out these proof questions. So what am I going to do here? It looks complicated. It's not going to be complicated. What do I do? Cross multiply. Cross multiply, OK? So the denominator, if I just bracket this, the denominator is going to be these two things multiplied together. So it is going to be sine x 1 minus cos x, OK? The numerator is going to be sine squared x. And then careful, because this is also bracketed, 1 minus cos x times 1 minus cos x which I could write as 1 minus cos x all squared. But in a second, it might help you when you're doing the expanding brackets to keep going here, OK? Now, I saw someone else do something, and I'm not going to name names because they know exactly who they are, who wanted to then just cancel this 1 minus cos x with this 1 minus cos x, say, in a similar kind of question. Why can you not cancel 1 minus cos x and 1 minus cos x here? Yes? Because it's being added. If it was being multiplied, we could do. This does not have a 1 minus cos x being multiplied with it, so we cannot cancel these things out, OK? And you could again try it out with numbers. It wouldn't work. So I'm actually just going to do some really laborious expanding of brackets. So on the numerator, I've still got the sine squared x, but I want to expand these brackets here. Haroon, can you expand these brackets for me? Uh, it's 1 minus 2 cos x plus cos squared x. Good. OK, so we've just expanded this. Just double brackets. And then... On the denominator, we have sine x. I could expand the brackets. I'm not sure if I want to expand the brackets just yet. Um, so I'm going to just leave it to see what happens with my numerator, OK? Just in case I don't know. So the numerator, what's the numerator going to simplify to? Can you see anything special that will happen with the numerator? Chaz? Sine x squared plus 2x squared plus x. Yep. Good. Sine squared x plus cos squared x is going to be 1. So this yellow bit is 1, and I'm adding on another 1. 1 add 1 is 2. So the numerator is just 2 minus 2 cos x all over sine x 1 minus cos x. Now, we kind of feel like you've got a bit stuck. So you need to look at it and think, well, what algebra what algebraic manipulation can I do to this thing? Can anybody spot anything that you could do to this thing? Just something that you could have done before. Yeah, you just factorize, OK? You're going to just factorize the numerator. And I factorize the numerator by taking out a common factor of 2. So I get 1 minus cos x. And then on the denominator, I've got sine x, 1 minus cos x. Am I allowed to cancel these ones out? Yeah. Good, because everything is being multiplied. So the 1 minus cos x is going to cancel, and I get left with 2 over sine x. What is 2 over sine x? Two cosec. It's 2 cosec x. 1 over sine x is cosec x, so it is 2 cosec x. And do you see how this is a proof? Because we started off with the thing they gave us. We did lines of working where only one, one or two things was changed on each line. And we ended up with the thing that we were being asked to prove. They said where k is a constant to be found. So clearly, in this case, k is equal to 2. It's not easy. I'm not showing you this to be like, great, now I've shown you it, you can do it. I've shown you it to, remind, to show you the way that I think about these questions. And when I got stuck at a particular point here, I said to myself, 
what, what technique can I use? Okay, well, they both got a two, so I'm gonna factorize it. And then suddenly you see this one minus cos x popping out. So there is, other than those two tips I've given you, of put them all in sine and cos and add, add together or subtract the fractions, you're going to have to just sort of start getting a feel of these questions and that will come from practice and that practice will be frustrating and that practice will be challenging. But that's what it means to get good at something. It means to go through that difficult phase and to not give up with it, okay? So then part B of the question is nice and easy because it's only one mark. It says, hence explain why this equation being equal to 1.6 has no real solutions. Well, they love to do these questions where part A of the question is, is gonna be helping you to do part B. And the word that gives that away is? Hence. hence. This word hence is telling me use A to do B. Well, A just tells, tells me that this whole thing is the same as this whole thing. So instead of this equation, which is exactly the same as this one I've just boxed in blue, instead of saying that that equals 1.6, I'm just going to say that 2 cosec x equals 1.6. Okay? And this is going to lead us on to the next topic that we're going to do. Now, if I wanted to solve this equation, I would divide by 2 so that cosec x is equal to 0.8. But I can't do the inverse of cosec x. What is cosec x? It's 1 over sine x. So 1 over sine x is 0 0.8. So to find out what sine x is, I do the reciprocal of both sides. What is the reciprocal of 0 0.8? 5, 5 over 4, or 1.25. And it says, explain why this equation has no real solutions. What do you know about the sine graph? What kind of values can you get from the sine graph? You, can't go one you, can't, you can only go between 1 and minus 1. So because here, we can say that sine x is only between minus 1 and 1, so there are no solutions. Could you have said the range of cosec x is greater than or equal to 1 or less than or equal to Yes. Yes, you could have also said, without doing this whole thing here, you could have said cosec x is not allowed to be between... Uh, 1 and minus 1, and that was because if we go back a few slides, the graph uh, cosec is this red graph, and you can see the red graph doesn't have anything in between 1 and minus 1. So you could also say that as well, Sam. Yes. Okay, so it's not easy. I, I, I definitely I want to tell you every single year 13 group always finds this topic the biggest, um, the biggest step up. Okay, it is, it is the biggest step up, but we're going to keep working on it, okay?